let's do the edit. The edit is going to be very similar to the add new, so we can pretty much copy this. So what I'm going to do is copy everything from here and create an edit page. Let's call it edit post.ejs and let's paste all this. So instead of add new post, we're going to do, let me close this, close the dashboard, close this. All right. Instead of this, we're going to do view slash edit post. We can go back to the dashboard. That's absolutely fine. Then we're going to have a delete button here, which we actually already created in the other page, but let's build one. So form, this is going to be an action of slash delete dash post. And this is going to have EJS out data dot underscore ID. So we can delete the specific blog post. And this is going to have the method of delete. I'll show you how this is going to work in a second. And then this is going to be method post. And inside the form, we just need a button. So input. And then this is going to be submit. And then this is going to have the value of delete. The class name of btn-delete. And then btn. That's it. Now for the form, it's going to be very similar. Instead of add post, we're going to change this to be edit post. And then we're going to put the ID of which post we are editing. So EJS out, and this is going to be data dot underscore ID. Question mark underscore method equals put because we're going to be updating data. And then this can stay as post. That's fine. So we have the title, the content. Instead of adding, we're going to be updating. So value, update, submit. Okay, that's pretty much it. Now let's make this page work. Just like we have the other page in the admin route, this one here, we can copy it, the get one, and paste it inside here. And now instead of get, we're going to put put, but this won't work just yet. Let's put, let's edit the get to put as well. And this is going to be, instead of add post, this is going to be edit post. And we need to be able to get the ID, just like we've done earlier. We're going to do ID and we'll be able to grab that. So I'm going to remove everything else. The authentication middleware again is here. So that's good. I'm going to remove everything else from here. So in order to update the database with a specific blog post, we can wrap everything inside track catch. And inside here, we can do a wait post and then we're going to do find so we need to query find by id and update so we're finding the record by id which we're going to get and we're going to update it so to grab the id we can do request dot params and then we get the id from the euro and then we do comma and in curly brackets let me close this so you can see in curly brackets we can update the title to the request.body from the form and title. And then we're going to do the same for the uh, body. This is the input. So request.body. Uh, body. Cool. We don't need this. And we could also add the updated at field. So updated at, and then we can do date now. So you know when you've updated the blog post. That's pretty much it. And now we can redirect to the same post, rest.redirect. And then inside here, we can do, in slightly quotes, we can do edit. Post. And then I'm going to do dollar sign, curly brackets, request.param to get the param ID. ID. So we're going to redirect to the same page when we update. I think that's pretty much it. So if I save this, if I refresh, we're going to edit this ruddy one. Click on it. Cannot get. And this is because I haven't done the get route. So we've actually done the update one, but we haven't done the get route. Okay, let's copy this. Paste it on top of it here. And instead of put, this is going to be get, get. We're going to get the edit post ID. It's going to be the same. And instead, we're going to find a record. So let's change this to const data equals await post dot find one and then inside here we can do 
by id so id and then request dot params dot id like so so we're finding one record and now we need to display it. so we're going to do rest dot render and then we're going to render the admin sorry admin and then edit post page and then we're going to pass the data inside here so data and don't forget to pass the layout it's a little bit annoying that we have to do that admin layout and we're done we can also pass the uh, locals as well so i'm going to copy some and paste them in here locals title edit post and i'm going to pass that as well just so we have it come on we're good to go if we go back now with a refresh we should be able to view and edit post i go back here we go ready i click on it and we're getting one two three whoops wrong link sorry ready if i click on edit we're getting this now the problem is that we are not getting the data so inside here i've actually passed the data but we haven't rendered the data inside the input so we've got the input but we need to render the data inside it to do this where we have input for example we can do value and then we can do ejs out and we can do data dot title and the same for the messages here where is it? the text area sorry we can do data dot body and that's it if you go back refresh you'll see ruddy testing one two three if i go back let's click on this one deployment of node.js application you'll see we're getting the text and so on so now if i go to ruddy and update it one two three and let's remove this update it let's click update you will see that we're getting cannot post now this is because i'm using method put we actually need to add method override in our application in order to be able to put to to use put and delete so what we need to do is go back to admin.app.js and at the top here we need to include it so maybe after i don't know after express here layout we can do const and we can do method override equals require and then we require method override like so so now in order to use this method override we need to go here under or middleware and we can do app.use and then we can do method override and the method i'm using is underscore method save this and now we should be able to use it if i refresh you will see that everything is updated so i can remove one two three the query happens in the background and we're just redirected to the same page and you can't really see what's happening so i can just put one two three here we go and we're done and if i wanted to see this on the front end i can go to the website and then i can click on ready and then here it is all right let's go back to the dashboard and now let's have a look at how we can do the delete so the delete is actually fairly basic we've already done the job so for example on this edit post page we have the delete button and again we're using the method delete here so all we need to do is find this record so we've put the id in here when we click on the form we can select the specific id and delete it that should be fairly easy to do let's go back to the admin copy a route here and i'm going to paste it here at the bottom so this one is going to be a delete it's going to be admin delete post and then inside here we can do let me copy one i don't want to type the same thing over and over again so i'm going to copy this one here and make sure that you close it all right so we have router.delete and then we can do delete post and then the id we also have the authentication middleware here so you need to be logged in in order to delete the post and now we can do try catch and then inside the try we can do await and then post dot delete one and then we select it by id so inside here we do underscore id and then the request param dot id and then we can just redirect res dot redirect and then we can redirect to the dashboard 
that's pretty much it console the log and then we do error now we've already done this same delete button in here and we've already done it inside here so if i delete the ruddy record it's gone if i delete one more uh, actually i'm gonna create this delete button now okay cannot delete delete post let's fix that so the other one was working but the one on the admin page wasn't so dashboard and then let's have a look maybe i can copy it from the edit here let's have a look what the difference is so we have delete post delete id method delete method post oh it's post id i think let's have a look okay so if i do delete button okay now it's working so if i click delete as you can see they're disappearing right so it was just this here needs to be post id instead of data that's all cool so now we can tidy things up okay and the last thing that we need to do is the logout button so let's navigate back to the project open the views partials header underscore admin this is where the logout button is and we need to change this there are a couple of ways of doing it but i'm gonna do it with a link and i'm gonna create a route so instead of a button let's do a href and we can send it to a route called logout and then i didn't prepare a class name for this so it might look a little bit ugly we need to close the link and let's have a look refresh and yeah it's just a link at the moment you can make it look a little bit nicer than this but what i want to do now is create the router logout so if we go to the server route admin at the bottom here maybe we can copy a comment and then we can create all router here so i'm gonna do so this is gonna be a get and then this is gonna be admin logout so let's do router dot get and inside here the page that we want to get is going to be called logout we're going to have the response sorry we're going to have the request and response this is going to be a narrow function and inside here we need to clear the cookie so when we are logged in if i do right click inspect and then applications you will see that we're getting this token if i remove this token then refresh we're going to be logged out so we basically want to remove the cookie with the name of token to do this we can use the clear cookie so res dot clear cookie and then the name which is token and that's pretty much it but now that we've deleted the cookie we want to either display a message or redirect so let's do res.json and then i'm going to display a message and then this message is going to be logout successful like so then we're just going to redirect so let's test this and then we'll finish the rest so i'm going to go back refresh the page token is still here if i click logout you will see that we're getting logout successful if i was to zoom in and now let's log back in super quickly admin and i'm going to put ruddy password press enter and we're in okay so now instead of doing the res.json let's do copy this and let's do res.redirect and you can do whatever you like maybe you can do a page that says you've been logged out or whatever you wish so i'm just going to do res.redirect and i'm going to redirect to the home page and of course we want to remove this otherwise it's just going to stop there so rest redirect to the home page and we should be good to go save this let's go back refresh the token is here we click logout the token is now gone and we are redirected to the home page okay and the last thing that i wanted to show you which i totally forgot is the active links here so what we're going to do is let's go back and inside the server let's create a new folder called helpers and inside this folder we're going to have a file called route helpers dot js and essentially i'm going to create a function that we can pass the current route on and then display the active class so it's going to be a function 
we can call it is active route and inside here we're gonna have two parameters the route and the current route and then we're gonna return route equals current route and then we can either have it as active or it's gonna be empty active is the class name that I've added in the CSS if we look super quickly CSS styles and if we look we have head and have ul a and when we add active to the link we just display it as gray and you can do whatever you like with it so that's all good let's close it and we also need to export this function so we can do module dot export and then that would be equals and we can export the is active function from here and now we can use it in our project so if we go to the app.js let's close everything else first of all at the top here we can bring that function by doing const is active route and then this is going to be equals require and then we require the file which is on the server and then helpers and then route helpers close this and now we can create a global variable that we can use somewhere maybe around here so we can do app.locals is active route and then this is going to be equals is active route like so and now if we go to route and then the main route here we need to pass the data just like we pass the locals the data the current page and so on so for this example we're gonna have somewhere around here we can pass current route and the current route is gonna be slash because this is the home page and we can do the same for the rest so if you scroll down a little bit for the post id we can do a comma and we can do current route and then in slanted quote we can do slash post slash and then we can bring the slug and let's do it for the about page so if you scroll down a little bit here we can just do comma and then we can just put current route and this is going to be about and then you just continue doing this for every single route you have to add the current route and now to check which route we are on we can add this to our header so header ejs where we have the links inside here we can do ejs out and now we can do is active route we're gonna pass the slash and then the current route let's save this and let's copy this one more time and put it for the about page obviously you have to do this for the contact so in this case this is going to be about and this is going to be contact i didn't really create a contact page so that won't work you will see that the home page is now highlighted here it's slightly gray and if i click on the about you will see that the about is now highlighted and the jump is happening because we don't have any scroll in the about page and that's pretty much everything from this tutorial i hope that i didn't forget anything i hope that you find it useful and that's pretty much everything thank you very much for watching and now i would like to express my gratitude to the net ninja team for giving me the opportunity to share my knowledge in front of millions of people it's very generous of you thank you so much and don't forget to subscribe to the net ninja channel